Hi and good evening mm-hmm. members of Builders and Co-Creators. Uh I hope you had a good day. Uh, my day was tough. I was rained on like crazy. I went running and you know, I was all caught up. And so I got home dripping wet. But that does not stop us from converging here and having our baraza as always. You're very welcome. I hope you're having a better day than mine. Um Mwangi, how was your day? Ah, uh, my day was great. Although at some time mimi nimepatikana na mvua kidogo. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, all that we are here. So looking forward for a very interactive session this this evening. Nice. Uh, rain is yeah. good. So members, you're very welcome to the to the show. As we had promised, uh, we know that a lot of people are trying to buy land, either land in the village or in the schemes to to build homes. Others are planning to build, uh, to buy land in the uh, in the urban areas or some farmland. Some are trying to lease land to farm. We know the things that you're doing because we are also involved. So we thought that, um, you know, buying land or leasing land is pretty complicated. So we thought that we should speak with somebody who knows it all. Somebody of the legal practice. Um, please help me welcome Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles Ndegwa, have a good, uh, good evening, sir. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Good. You're very welcome Barazza. to the show. You're very welcome to the show, Chasing the Title Deed. Uh, as we had promised, we'll not keep you too long, uh, but we believe that this is an area that is so important in the value chain of construction because we do not build on air. You know, we, we, we root our, our structures in on something. Some people yeah. are looking for land to farm. Others are looking for land to lease. Others are looking for land to put temporary structures. So we thought that, uh, you know, rather than, you know, shooting in the dark, we should get somebody who is in the legal practice, somebody who knows things that are factual and that somebody who is willing to share with us. So you're very welcome and we appreciate your time this evening. Perhaps you take time to introduce yourself for 20 seconds and then we'll have the road on the show. Thank you, Salim. Yes, well, my name is uh, Dewa Charles Mwangi. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. We practice law in the name and style of Dewa and Dewa Advocates in Nairobi and its environment. And uh, we have a, a special place in our practice in terms of land matters, succession matters, because this is where we live every day, and this is where what we do every day. Yes. Excellent. And members, Mr. Ndegwa um, is, is, uh, is a very active member of our group. Uh, you will see his comments every so often, always, always, always supporting, always giving factual information. And for that reason, Mr. Ndegwa, we totally appreciate you here today. Thank you. Uh, so perhaps we, you know, get it on the road. And um, among I mean, you want to begin or shall I take on? Or shall I go I on? Think, I think uh, you, you'll take it, but there's something I think I want to just say before we start off with our interview today. So we, we have uh, another group about land content, uh, in this case of land, which is actually dedicated to just land content. And we shall be using that, that group for any any information on land so to join that group i've shared in the past comments in this video so and uh, take a time to join that group yeah that, that's all Salim. so i think you can take it so uh, monkey was the group of the land sister group oh yes it's called chasing the title deed yes so guys yeah. look for the land group chasing the title deed and interact with members and professionals and sellers and buyers and you know, get involved with this land thing because we all want it, we all want to own it or partially own it. So get with the program. In the same way that we're talking about construction, let's talk about land because land is capital and we cannot we cannot look away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. um yes. yes indeed. So advocate Charles, or shall I call you Ndegwa? <laughs> all right. So tell us the various ways through which someone can acquire land in this country. Uh, well, there are so many ways of acquiring land in this country. One is by inheritance. That is where you inherit from your parents. Another way is by purchase. You can purchase land. You can also lease land. You can also... Now, the other one is for the government, compulsory acquisition, but that's for the government. But the, basically, the main one for individual or private citizens is uh, buy, lease, or inheritance. Okay, so you can either inherit it from your folks 
or yes. you can lease it or you yes. can purchase it that is yes. how you own land but when you lease land when you when you rent lease is renting right when you Absolutely. yeah yes is is that land considered yours well not absolutely it's an interest that you have over another person's right because yeah. you have it from either an individual or you have a lease from the government the land is for the government but the government leases it to you for a period of 99 years but if it's a situation where it's a private individual lease between a private citizen and another private citizen then the lease is as per the agreement of lease and there are instances where you find that uh, if it's a lease from an individual person, it's proper to have that lease agreement registered against the title. That means that uh, when you have a lease agreement, you need to take that lease agreement to the, to the land registry for it to be registered against the title of the person who has leased land to you, so that if that person sells that land tomorrow, the person will be buying once he conducts a search, he'll be able to see that there is another interest on this land, and that is the lease agreement. Yes. Ah, so if today I wanted to lease land, I need to get the title of the person who is leasing land to me and take to the Ministry of Land so that it, so it's like putting a caution on it to say, uh, I have yes. it for the moment. So if yes. anybody else wants to buy it, they will yes. know, they will see the caution that that land has been leased. Yes, he will know that there is a person who has an interest in this land. And before he can purchase, then you need to deal with that interest before you get into a contract of sale. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Members, open your eyes. If you're going to lease land, Msifanyi Jwakali, Nauko Nyuma, at you, you've given somebody 60,000 shillings to use their land for one year. Utapata amekupatikis alafu ameuza. So if you get this take it to the Ministry of Lands and make sure that there's a, it's, it's sort of a caution because it is a tax. It's one agreement saying that you have you have uh, interest in that land and for that land to be handed on to the next buyer, that your interest has to be dealt with first, you know, so that way you're responsible. Okay. The reason for that uh, registration is so that uh, you are, if you have leased for five years, for example, the second year of the agreement the owner of the land, the proprietor of that land may opt to sell. You see now you have lost out in your three years because you had not registered that interest. And that's the mistake people make. Yeah. Guys, get it right. You're in the right group, so you're getting facts. You're leasing land, get that interest actually registered at the Ministry of Land against the title deed. Again, it's good to see the title deed because by the way, somebody can try to lease land to you that's not there. <laughs> so, so be careful. Be careful. Yes. All right, Mr. Ndegwa, what factors should we consider before buying land? Before buying land, And are these factors different in the rural areas and urban? Well, they're not different. The only issue that one should consider is the person who is selling land is the registered owner of that particular parcel of land. If it's the registered owner, that will be shown by conducting a search. But it's proper to go beyond conducting that search because when you do a, a search you only get to know the current owner but there are situations where especially under the regime of law that is called land register lands act or the title deeds eh, you purchase a green card a green card is the actual register a copy of the register and that copy of the register will actually give you the history of that land that this land came from the government of kenya to person X in 1960, he, person X sold to person Y in 1980, person Y closed that title for subdivision in 1990, these numbers was originated from that subdivision in 2002, so this is the current owner. By buying a green card, you're able to know whether that land has uh, some form of history in terms of court cases, it has some history of uh, fraud or it has a history in, in, in the nature that may prejudice your, your interest in purchasing that land. Excellent. So it's like a paper trail of what Absolutely. happened when, in terms of ownership, in terms of disputes, in, in terms, does it have, does it include things like mutation? Will well, that all be registered in the green card? When you see, this, yes, it is going to be registered that there was a subdivision. And when there's a subdivision, of course, the mutations are there. 
Yes, of course. So guys, if you want to see the DNA of the land that you are interested in, go to the Ministry of Lands and buy something called the green card. The green card will say when the land was, was handed over from the government to the, your, your, their forefathers <laughs> and then how it was then passed on. You know, it does show you everything about that. And so, so, so do not, due diligence will require that you do not buy land without buying the green card. And Mr. Ndegwa, where might we buy the green card? Uh, at the land registry, you need, the only thing you need to buy the green card is that... You Charles, where can we buy the green card? You buy it from the land registry, the, the Ministry of Land in the land registry. And you need a letter from an advocate saying that you need a mm. copy of the green card. Can you hear me? I can yes. we can hear you all right I was so saying, can we can we not buy the green card without a letter from the advocate well the practice is that uh, you need an advocate's letter and uh, unlike buying a such a such you can buy without an advocate's letter but green cards they are restricted because there are some fraud stars who buy green cards to go and prepare their own green cards in river road so the protection is that the advocate to request for mm -hmm. that green card would be responsible in the event that uh, such a scenario occurs. And you see, the beauty of the green card, Salin, is that uh, you're also able, someone with a keen eye in terms of understanding land transactions, you're able to identify whether from transaction one to transaction two, whether it was a legal transaction. Uh, the reason why I say this is because, uh, taking, for example, land is registered in person X name, if it is registers in another person's name, then there means there is a transfer. And there means there was land control board consent. But if it is if it is transferred by the nature of succession, it means there was succession case in court, which should be reflected in that green card. There are particular forms that are filled so that, that the registration is effected. We call it a transmission. So in the event that then there is a, a, a transfer of, of either of the two and you don't happen to see transfer forms or you don't happen to see a, a, a certification of confirmation of grant from a succession court, then you're able to know there is something suspect with this land. That is yeah. why it's proper to look at those transactions keenly. Each transaction that is reflected in that green card is something yeah. that you really need to find out what it is about. Yeah, we we'll see on the two paper, and the yeah. and the thing is not green; it's it's written on paper, but it's called the green card because it should give you the green light. Now, members, yeah. one thing that Mr. Degwa has has sort of you know breezed over, but which I would like to reiterate is the fact that there's a difference between land search and actually applying for the green card. The search you can these days do online. Or if you want to go to the ministry, you still can, and you do not need a lawyer's letter. Yes. But to get the green card, you will need a letter from the advocate, which says that, yeah, your interests are genuine. It's sort of like an endorsement, like, um, with your green card. Because yes. there are people who actually buy the, um, who actually go for the green card for purposes of preparing their own or some, somewhat trying to manipulate it, you know. So so it is to say that you're going there to get the green card for the right reasons. So be friends with an advocate uh, whenever you want to buy land. Not be friends with them for free, but yeah, at least what a party a discount. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Mr. So Chico, yeah, yeah, Mwangi. Uh, maybe about that green card. Maybe uh, you might tell us how much it goes for, and maybe are these services available online? Can I be able yeah. to do that online? Yeah, well, for a green card, uh, you may not be able to do it online. And uh, you pay a fee of 2500 for you to get a green card. And you may have to wait for about a week or so, so that you can get a copy of that green card. Okay. Yes. And, about, and it cannot be so, done online, can it? Well, you cannot. The only thing you can do online is a search. But uh, yeah. Card, yes. Okay. Right. So, Mr. Mwangi, about about estimation of value, you know, um, how can is there a way, is there a formula that I can use to estimate the value of land that I intend to buy? Well, that is more so of a commercial question in nature, and and not so much legal in terms of uh, we are used to estimating the value 
with the adjacent social amenities and infrastructures. And that's what makes the land value to go up or low. So the closest infrastructures will determine the value of that particular land. But when you are making a transfer as a purchaser, you pay stamp duty on a particular value. You don't yes. Pay, yes, you don't pay stamp duty on the value of the land that you bought. For example, if you bought a particular parcel of land at two million, you don't pay stamp duty on two million. You pay stamp duty on the government valuation. The government will conduct its valuation on that particular piece of land and will tell you that you are, the valuation of the government is about three million and you pay stamp duty on three million. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 uh, guys, therefore, we are saying, Mr. Degwan, correct me if I'm wrong, that there is more than one sort of value to land. Okay, there is value, but then there is a government valuation and then there is commercial valuation. Guys, yes. just like when you to sell a car, you know, you will tell somebody that car will be half a million, for instance. But then when you take it for insurance, the insurance company will tell you it is worth 600,000, that sort yes. of thing, because yes. they need a base upon which to project the valuation, which is a certain percentage. Yeah? So, um, so, so, so you're saying, therefore, Mr. Degwa, that um, the valuation is a commercial matter. It's not a legal within the, it's not a legal, you know, within the legal scope. Yeah. But but then people need to look around for the potential of land, for what other amenities are around there, and how much the neighbor sold theirs a year ago, for instance. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. The, the, reason right. the, uh, yeah? the reason why the government has zoned particular areas is because of uh, raising revenue. You'll find that you buy land at 360 million, <laughs> but the government has valued has zoned that area to be 600 million. So some duty will be on 600 million. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 I get it. And what is the percentage stamp duty these days on land? Uh, it's two categories, categorized on two issues. If it's agricultural land, it's 2%. But if it's land within a municipality, it's 4%. So any land that you pay rate or you pay rent on, because you can pay rate even on freehold, then that is absolutely 4%. Because it's within yeah. a municipality. It Nice. And guys, we'll get to a point where we are talking about freehold or lease or agricultural land. We are getting there. I know you have many questions. Just be patient. So, so um, Mr. Degwa, please tell us what the process of buying land is. So I have done the search, right? Absolutely. And I have seen the land is registered in the name of Mr. Charles Degwa. Then yes. I buy a green card, right? Yes. Or is there anything in between? Well, it's the, the issue of uh, making sure that you have the, the, a copy of the title as you buy the search. So that you the the title name can correspond with the person selling, and the ID, right. the ID card of the person selling. Once you have right. a search and a and a green card, the procedure of law requires you just do a search. But I always recommend that you do a, you buy a green card so that you get the history. Once you have done your due diligence properly, then you get into the agreement uh, perspective. And I always advise that the two parties to have different advocates. But the practice is people get paper signed by one advocate, or even at times they do the agreement by themselves. And this is not good for the reason that at that sale agreement level, the law says that, or the practice has been, you pay a deposit of 10% at the point of signing or executing the sale agreement, 10% of the purchase price. The reason is that you are giving your money, which is of equal value with the land that you're buying. So the person who is selling you the land should also be kind enough to wait for the balance because the seller agreement does not transfer the land or does not give you the proprietary interest in that land. So we have what we call completion period. It's for 90 days, but can be extended by parties. This is because one, someone buying might be getting a facility from the bank he might be getting some money also and might take some time. So we give it that 90 days. Mm -hmm. At the lapse of three months, completion period or completion date is when you exchange documents. And the documents to exchange and the purchase price, the balance of the purchase price, the 90% now. So the purchaser is giving out the balance, which is 90% of the purchase price. And the seller is going to give you signed transfers uh, register, uh, land control board consent if any, rates clearance certificate if any, 
rent clearance certificates, any and all other consents, and the past and all those other documents that are required. The reason for completion date is that's the point where you're exchanging land and money. But the reason why I'm saying I recommend to advocates is this: at that point of completion date, you have exchanged the person buying has actually given out the money in full, and this is what the, the seller needed. But the title is still reading the name of the seller. Yeah, so, the, so he has the title deed and the money. <laughs> he has the title deed and the money. So at this point is where, where you have two advocates or even one advocate acting for both parties. The money is kept in the advocate account for one advocate or in an escrow account for two advocates. Such that now within 14 days of that completion date, the registration of the title in the name of the purchaser is executed or is done. So that at the point of now releasing the money, the title is already reading in the name of the purchaser and the money is with the advocate and not the purchaser. At that point now, the money is just transferred to the, to the, to the seller. So I get it. For the conveyancing process. Yeah, guys, that it's a process, but remember you're buying something permanent like land, something capital as land. So be patient, do the search, get the green card, get an advocate, uh, bargain with your with your seller so that you pay 10% only and ask them to give you 90 days uh, so that you know um you can get money or you can be sure, let them give you a sale agreement because sale agreement, as the advocate here says, is not does not transfer land from one owner to the next. It doesn't. Then after the 90 days, or if you begin for 120, whatever you agree with your seller, uh, deposit money to their uh, to their to to your advocate to deposit it in their advocate's account. Yes. So when the time comes, then the transfer is executed fully, and then their advocate can give them the money. That way, none of you has both items, both money and title deed. You know, you give and take, you give a little bit and take. So be very careful. When you watch this video later, you will hear everything that Mr. Degwa said because I have not captioned everything. I hope you're following. Yeah. And Salim, so, just to add something there. The, yes. the, pra the practice has been that uh, you find at the point of sale agreement, the purchaser transfers all the money to the seller. So at that point, you are at the risk. Of, or you are at the mercy of the seller because if he refuses to go for the for the land control board or if he refuses to give you consent, say for example you have paid all the money and the seller has pending uh, rates, so he cannot get the rate clearance certificate, then it means you have lost the money and you cannot get the land. So you now have to begin the process of now recovering your money, which is yeah. a tedious process. You don't have the money, you don't have the land. Yeah, yeah, and guys, sellers can be cheeky, just like just as buyers can be. If they have not done the land, the, the, the you know, some of the clearances that he's supposed to do, like land rates, you know, sometimes they're selling land that they have not been paying rates for, and therefore it is not cleared. So if you give them all the money that they're asking for, it means now you're at there at their mercy, number one. Yeah. Number two, remember the land board sits not every day. It, it, it sits every so often. So if they refuse to show up at the land board to say that they're selling and to get all that clearance, you're in shit. And yet you have already paid all the money. So pay 10%, but gain for the 10%, get a sale agreement, get things rolling, you know, get your advocate looking after everything. Make sure that your seller attends to the land board requirements and that they have clear certificates for rates, and then you can give the money and your advocate by then would be having all the papers. Then it's a clean deal. And even that transaction between you and the seller will then go to the, to the green card, because who knows, you're probably buying to sell later, right? Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. careful. Do due diligence. Without due diligence, do not part with a shilling. Sour, sour? Sure. Sour. All right. Yeah. So, um, then, so Salim, I think this brings up... Uh, the importance of using a professional in, in that, especially in every aspect of construction because yes. you, you see even in other sectors that we have discussed before, I think uh, the importance of using a professional has come out very clearly because of the advantage of the yes. Because this yes. is your money you are going to use to spend on something and yes. you don't ignoring a professional, I think it's a, it's a recipe for, for it's danger a recipe in the future or, or something. Yeah, so yeah. It's just a point I was raising that I think the use of professionals is a very it's an important, it's a very important role in, in, in transacting important. anything. Yeah. 
extremely important. I do agree with you guys. There's something a lawyer will see that you cannot see. There's a reason they're in law school for those many years. Yeah. So please, them do their work. There are things that they will see on that uh, on that green card that you might not be able to read properly. You know, so be careful. So, uh, Mr. Jaguar, there's something you mentioned about acquiring land through inheritance. Yeah. yeah. Is there any legal application? What is the legal process if my father wants to give me land? Is there any room for the legal process or for an advocate? <laughs> uh, well, if he's, a, uh, he's giving you land in his lifetime, there's still room for an advocate and a role for him to play for two reasons. One, you may not be the only sibling in that family. There are other siblings who also will be given land. And there will also be the process of transfer, the preparation of the transfer documents. And then the survey work, cost of subdivision, mm -hmm. submissions, booking land control board, two land control boards, one for subdivision, another one for transfer. So it occurs that inheritance is in two aspects. Uh, our father or, or, or whoever can give land in his lifetime. But in most cases for us, it happens after his demise. The reason is because they are cultural beliefs that they do not want to be inherited while they are, while they are alive. <laughs> when, true, true. So yeah, while, true. while they are not there or they are dead, then the legal process kicks in proper because you have to go to court to, to do succession. When you do succession, there is a procedure where someone becomes an administrator of the estate, he collects the estate, and after collecting the estate, he has to inform court that this is how I intend to distribute the estate of the late. And it must be in agreement with all the siblings of, of, of the deceased person. Such that now... <laughs> such that so I was going to ask, are you saying that it is easier, this transfer through inheritance is easier done when the transfer raw is still alive? Yes. It's easier and uh, faster for two reasons. He is a person transferring land to you directly. He is there. He can sign, execute all documents. He, he is alive. That's, that's basically it. He can transfer it freely. But now, it, it, while he is not there, then it has to go a legal process so that court can be clearly uh, sure and identify all the beneficiaries. Because you will find situations where... Uh, estates are being misused and the estates are being uh, uh, ripped off completely and other beneficiaries are being left out such that someone, an administrator distributes the land and leaves out one of the children or, or, or a child of the deceased without considering whether this person should also inherit from the estate. These are very, very common occurrences. Yeah. So guys, if you have children, before you Kaput, uh, <laughs> do the right thing. Others, you'll be sub <laughs> subjecting your children to a lot of court cases. The, the, you know, the law of inheritance is like from here to Timbuktu. It can take a long time. And that's where you hear, oh, oh, they had another child with, I don't know who, where, behind the Jewish yes. kiosk. No, do the right thing. If you have a child out of wedlock, give them their share while you're still alive because then you're saving everybody the headache. And 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 and, and uh, this is not to say that if, that if you your parents are living now you go hounding them for <laughs> your inheritance, you know talk nicely to parents. You know what to do. That is out of the scope of this discussion. But there is indeed a legal scope for uh, land inheritance when you're handing over land from your yourself to your children, or when you're receiving land from your parents downward to yourself. You know, there is definitely legal scope there. And if you do it while you're still breathing and you can sign and you're sane and you're not senile and you have no medical, you're not like, you're not using your fingerprints when you're on your deathbed, it yeah. gets much easier. So do the right thing. Do the right thing, guys. All right. So, Mr. Zegwa, yeah. uh, there's something called title insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about it, like, start by defining it and why we need it. The, the title insurance coverage is for two reasons. One, to ensure that the proprietorship of the title is uh, actually guaranteed. Title insurance coverage is ensuring that there is a guarantee on the on on the on the proprietorship of the owner of that title. That's basically it. 
Say that again. Sorry, I was drinking water. I'm sorry. I mean, title insurance coverage is to ensure that uh, the proprietorship or the owner of that particular piece of land is guaranteed his ownership. But this is basically given by the government at times. But you also find the uh, private companies have now begun doing that also. But why? Why do I need it? Why do I need the title insurance? Is it is it like an insurance? Well, so to speak, yes. For purposes of identification, in the event that uh, you lost that title, without uh, having participated in the loss, because there are circumstances where you lose your proprietorship of land, or you have someone has actually defrauded you of your land without your participation or without your knowledge. But there are also occurrences where you may lose the land, but with your participation, not with the standing that you didn't know that you have participated. So it kind of uh, to cushion you from such kind of, of losses. Ah, I see. Is there money paid for it? Yes. There is money. We pay the government. That assurance? That insurance? Yes. yes. You pay with the insurance, yes. But for the government, the reason why the government has the registry, because we, we, say, we, we actually say that the government has an alloyed title for the whole country. That means the government is the owner of all land. But it has proceeded to give you as private individuals land. It has proceeded to lease land at some levels by, by way of leases because it cannot uh, carry out any or, or, or have all land for itself. So when it has that alloyed title, then that gives you the security. That gives you the I security. Got it. When it has the, 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 the registries where it, it keeps it the registers of land, that gives you the security. And the registries are, are several. They are everywhere in each and every county. For the, 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 Just to bring you up to speed, there were several laws there before relating to land. We had Registered Lands Act, we had Registration of Titles mm -hmm. Act, we had Government Lands Act, we had Indian Transfer of Properties Act. So each regime of law had a registry. The regime of law that was very friendly is the Registration of Titles, the, the Registered Lands Act. These are, are, are uh, registries across the country in each and every county. There are other two registries, which is only in Nairobi and Mombasa. And this is where we have leases and, uh, and, 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 and you have a government giving you a paper con in terms of a lease. So this registry guarantee you the insurance of your title. So such that you can even sue the Minister of, the Ministry of Land or the Chief Land Registrar if you think your land has been defrauded illegally without your participation for indemnification and you'll get back to the title or you'll get back compensation in terms of money but now also private companies have come in now started giving insurance in terms of that title okay so so mr Ndegwa, if i get this coverage yeah this insure this title insurance coverage and then yeah. on some and then the government decides that that, that um that some a road is going to pass by my uh my property, you know, through my property, or, you know, they're going to slice off some part of my property for purposes of building a road, or, you know, Kenya Power decides that they're coming to plan, to put, you know, a structure in my property because people need it, you know. Usually yeah. we can't push back. Usually you actually, you know, must comply. Does yeah. this uh, title insurance coverage help me when that happens? Yes, it does. It helps you because... Before government moves on your land, it needs to, to do a process of a compulsory acquisition. And this compulsory acquisition is done by the National Land Commission on behalf of the government as an agent for that particular institution that requires your land, whether Kenya Railways, whether the water institutions, wherever, or whether Kenya uh, Roads Board. So the National Land Com uh, Commission will come and conduct evaluation on your land. It will first give you a notice that it requires your land for public interest. Because public interest will always override private rights. That's true. Once the evaluation is done, then the process of compensation takes place. But you also find situations where 
government takes land or compulsory acquires land, but the money never reaches down to the proprietors of those parcels of land. That, that's very common. And, and it's, it's, it's occurred with the SGR. Unfortunately, yeah. the, some of the reasons why this happens is because government also delays in releasing money or probably there was no budget set, set, set across for that. Or even the budget that was set aside is actually lower than the actual amount on the ground. So there are so many factors that, that, that make that happen. But eventually, uh, you get to get paid your money. And especially if you have to go to court, you also get paid your money. Yeah, which, but you will only be paid if there was a coverage, uh, you know, title insurance coverage. Otherwise, you say, ah, he's a recalling image to go somewhere with no compensation. So do the right thing, guys. There are all these things we are not aware of, but if you do the right thing and anything happens, that, uh, gosh. That, and should anything happen, then uh, then then you will get compensation. Much as it might take time, but you have a right, and you have something that covers you, that enables you, facilitates you to to you know go and chase for it. Otherwise, udalia kwa cho. Something I need right. to on uh, on inheritance. This is a very key aspect of uh, inheriting land, and it's the most common in this country. You do not find. Uh, people giving their land or, or transferring their land to their children in their lifetime. So succession is the most simplest case in court. It's the simplest case in court. Why do I say so? I say so because you can already see the end. There is always one end in succession. That all the siblings of the deceased, all the intended beneficiaries must all inherit from that estate of the deceased. But you find that but what who on a Zosana, someone requires a bigger portion of land simply because he thinks he's a man. Someone thinks that the sister should not get a portion of land simply because she is married. But those are procedures or or, 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 or or beliefs that have been overtaken by events. So it is good that when we are doing succession, we are very keen not to be shortchanged by those people who think uh, they have a bigger right than the other. Yep. Yep, yep, I cannot overemphasize yeah. that. That touches yeah. on the constitution yeah. itself. Everybody has a right. <laughs> so you, yeah. you, I know, I know that a lot of men don't want their sisters to inherit land. I will not discuss that, but hey, it's their right. Yes, Mwangi, you want yeah. to say something? Actually, yeah, actually, I think last week there was someone who, who had that discussion in this group about saying that uh, she's a woman, so she was complaining that her brothers actually didn't want her to actually inherit land from from their parents. So when Degwa you raised that that up actually I wanted like from a legal perspective, can you actually put it uh, right here so that our members know that actually the constitution gives the right to even women to actually also inherit land from their father. Yes, yes. You, you see even before the advent of the new constitution Everybody was supposed to inherit land, including women. But now we had a cultural belief that women should not. But thanks to the constitution. You see, succession begins from the chief. Your area chief is a person who is bestowed by the laws to identify the children of the deceased person. So the chief writes a letter and says that the deceased left behind a wife and, and six children, or two wives and ten children, or he left behind just children. So if you are not appearing in the chief's letter, then you have a way of intervening yourself in court. You can bring what we call an objection, saying that you are a child of the deceased person, and you have not been involved, or you have not been alerted, you have not been uh, given an opportunity. That way, court will always listen to you and even go to an extent of trying to identify whether you are really a child of the deceased person. If you are, then you are considered. In the issue of uh, whether gender, certain gender should be inherited or not, that is absolutely a creation of we, the human people. Because as long as you are a child of the deceased, it doesn't matter whether you are female or male, you are supposed to inherit from that estate. But it, it occurs where situations where maybe someone says, I don't want to inherit anything from this estate. Let it be given to my brothers. That's very, that's very common. Others just pull out willingly. But that is the aspect that should be clear, that you can pull out willingly, but where you are not willing, 
then you should not be compelled not to inherit. Yes. Exactly. And when you say children of the deceased, is it only biological children? Even the ones that he has officially recognized as his children. We call them dependents of the rest of the deceased. Even the ones he has recognized. Excellent, guys. Yes, so those of you who are running to court saying, oh, there's this cousin of ours who wants to inherit from my father. If your father recognized them, they become part of the heirs of that land. It's just the way that the law of inheritance is. So let's carry on. I think we are getting out of scope a little bit. Yeah, um, Mr. Degwa, tell us about freehold and lease. Unasikia mtu anauza land and asema, ah, iyo ni freehold. Na nyingine, yeah. oh, that one has a lease of 99 years. So perhaps together with that, you can tell us what it means when somebody says that that land has a lease of 99 years. Yes. Is it to say that then there's a, t a time will come when that land is reverted to the government? And is it important for a buyer to then ask, okay, the lease was 99 years, in which case, what is the balance? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, so yes, so yes. please educate us in that, that area of lease and, how, and, and, and freehold. And what can happen in a freehold property and what cannot happen in a lease land? Yes, thank you, Salim. You see, uh, freehold titles are those titles that once government did the demarcation, allocation, the land was given to a particular person. It was given to Mwangi. So that it becomes an absolute owner. With a freehold title, you have the absoluteness of title. With a leasehold, or with a lease, you have an interest of in that land over another person's interest. Here, that, that other person's interest is the government. Government is the one that gives leases for 99 years under the new constitution, previously 999 years. So if it's a, a lease, then you have a lease for 99 years, and at the lapse of the 99 years, the right to re renew that right or that lease is also on new first. But where you see that right to renew the, the lease, then the, gov the land reverts back to government for allocation to another person. Okay, so sorry. So if I bought land and, and, uh, and, and, and it says lease is 99, because 99 is pretty much the standard, right? Yes. Um, yes. Is, is there, am I being silly to ask the seller, for instance, how much longer the lease uh, can last? Uh, you know, what is the balance of lease before before I can actually go to reapply for a renewal of lease? You're actually not being silly because that's your right. You are buying that interest for the remaining period. If the person who had the lease, the, the lessee, had it for 40 years, then you'll have that lease for the next 59 years. So at the lapse of the 19, 59 years, then that land reverts back to government but you also have a reserve right to renew that lease first. You are given that first priority as a part, the holder of that lease to renew it. But in the event that you fail to renew, now the government can proceed to allocate it to another particular person of interest. So, so guys, important when you're buying property, land specifically, check if it is lease or if it's freehold. If it is lease, ask how, okay, the lease usually would be 99 years, but ask, you never know, policy changes. And then ask how much longer that lease is still valid. Because at the end of that lease, you will need to apply for a renewal of the lease. Failure to which, utaka unaishi yako, na kuna mtu anapewa hiyo land yako na atarudi because it's a new lease they have been given. So don't lose track of the length of lease when it expires and the need thereof of, uh, to, re to have it renewed. How, how tedious is the renewal of a lease, uh, Mr. Degua? Well, it was extremely tedious previously, but right now that as that arm of renewal is with the National Land Commission. The mandate is, is with the National Land Commission. It always advises whether it's the, the, the county government mm -hmm. to the renewal because those leases they are held by the county government for purposes of government. So the process of renewal okay. the process of renewal is you make an application to the county government. The county government is advised by the National Land Commission. Upon such advisory, then the national, the, the county government proceeds to issue you with, a, with, a, with a lease, a new lease. Okay. Maybe, Excellent. I, I, I want to ask uh, another one. Maybe when it comes to renewing the lease, 
uh, does the law provide or maybe make it such that you have the first priority to, to have actually to remove that so that we don't have someone else coming in maybe even for people to actually get rid get rid of, of that property do you have a priority to actually renew that land yes you have a priority and i'll give a scenario where the, the court of appeal has pronounced itself in some of these issues there was a case in court where someone went to seek a location of a particular plot he actually knew the particular plot that he wanted to be allocated so when the owner or the person who had the lease went to have his lease renewed he found oh there's actually a new person so this case found its way to court and the fundamental question that the court of appeal dealt with was you as the person who was asking to be allocated land how did you know the particular number or the particular piece of land that you wanted to be allocated because simply when you are seeking to be allocated land you are you are, you are applying for land you don't know whether you're going to be given land in in mulolongo or you're going to be given a parcel of land in uh, Lavington by the county government. So when you actually point out a particular piece, then it's suspicious. You knew you wanted to actually override the right of the person who has the list. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that response. Very good. Okay. Yes, Salim. Okay, Salim, you can proceed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We are having a lot. Okay. Salim? I think she's having a lot. So I think maybe. Salim, are you back? Sure. Anyway, I, I think. I, <laughs> interesting very very interesting so guys what to take away is you know please be very um aware of of the lease period of the lease period balance and um and and and, and make sure that you renew it yes mwangi no just, just proceed i think we had a lag that's why we, we missed it Hello? for a few seconds yeah yes we are having a bad lag i can hear it but we are almost done. Yeah. Wangi? Yeah, let, let, let me ask. Uh, I, I have one for you, Mbegwa. Maybe yes. at this point, I, I would want actually to acknowledge that. Do you want us to take a water break? No, actually, Salina, I'm, I'm uh, I'm, I have a question. So I think you are just behind in some few seconds. You are lagging behind in a few seconds. So Ndegwa, yeah. I was yeah. I was just uh, maybe acknowledging that land remains a a, a, a contentious and problem, problematic issue in Kenya, eh? particularly yeah. land land held hey, in, guys. Uh, in areas predominantly perceived as the traditional home of a community. So in this regard, yeah. I, I also acknowledge Shall that we carry the on? So I think Salim Salim is having a lag. Yeah. Shall yeah. we carry on? Yeah, but yes. I think she will, she will catch up. Okay, we will proceed then. Uh -huh. Proceed, Mwangi. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so I was saying... So I guess, Mr. Degwa, my next and almost final question so, is let, um, let when I'm buying land, is there a way uh, to confirm or to check what other amenities are coming up near me or what other amenities are planned around my property so that you know, you had the story of somebody who went and they were selling land, they subdivided, they erected um, a signage for Daystar University. Yeah? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, such situations, normally you need to get a, a very close person with... Uh, Monkey, can't hear you? Well, I was saying, such occurrences you need to get information from the county government and uh, particularly the, the, the planning office because each county government has a, a planner or an office of the planner the physical planner who will give you a schedule of what has been planned by the county government in a particular area so you'll be able to know what is coming up in that area and that will also inform the value of that particular land in that region also so that basically gives you an understanding of what is coming up and what is where. The other thing you need to buy is you need to buy uh, an RIP 
M map. We call it a registered uh, index map from Survey of Kenya. This map will also show you the areas that have been left by the government and so to speak the county government as areas of public areas where you'll have schools, where you'll have hospitals, you'll have uh, other social amenities so that you also identify which is the closest amenity to where you are, which is where is the closest uh, hospital, where is the closest school to the particular piece of land you're buying. And this map also will help you to know areas that are designated as controlled zones areas that are not controlled, areas that uh, you can purchase land and put up an apartment or not. It, it's going to show you all that. Okay, so so you, you, I think you've touched also on the previous question that I was going actually to come to actually the zoning. Eh? So Salim right. has been has been having a lab, she'll be back shortly. So right. I think I'll just proceed with the question that you were talking about the, the land act that uh, the new constitution that came up with and you had mentioned earlier about the, the land act 2020 2012, the land registration act, the yes. national land commission act, and yes. the community land act. So uh in, in, in this uh all, all these acts I think they came with a new constitution and I was going to actually ask you so that you explain whereby you are you, you are also coming to the zoning. That, mm. that the constitution also through those acts it classified land into three categories the public land the community land and also uh private yeah. land yes so uh salim is back well, welcome back salim i think we lost you for a moment so karibu tena so mr degwa yeah. my question yeah so uh on uh on the question i was just finishing up was yeah. I, I was actually looking forward uh for you to actually break uh, break down about the public land, private land, community land, also in regard to for cases that I've had, like for instance in Kajiado, whereby you, you find there is community land, and then also people are selling that land as private land. So you see that kind of. Yeah, so I was hoping that you can actually elaborate further on this issue. Well, yes, uh, the constitution was very elaborate on these issues for two reasons that uh, under the previous constitution public land was in the hands of the president and the commission of lands he could dish out land to any person he wills he wishes anyhow but now under the new constitution it categorized public land private land and community land and the public land there are two categories there is that the unalienated land an alienated public land is in the hands of the national government to be uh, administered by the National Land Commission. Again, under the category of public land, there is trust lands. This is alienated public land, land that has already been alienated to be land that is uh, having either a particular institution or where the county government sits. This is land, also public land, under the county government. Trust lands are unalienated public lands within a particular county to be held by that county government for the people resident in that county. There is, if I may give an example, there, is a, there are cases where you find that counties are fighting over parcels of land, claiming that this is our land, yet it's located in a particular county. So counties have become the proprietors of all trust lands within their county for the benefit of residents in that county. The other, the other classification of land is community land, like you clearly pointed out in Kajiado. Community land is registered in the name of uh, groups of or representatives or special groups within a particular community or any other formula of identifying a mode of registering land as a community land under the Community Lands Act. This is where the community is to benefit from the land as a whole and not as an individual. So no particular person can lay claim or ownership on that particular land other than the community. The, 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 the funny thing about community land is that uh, in terms of, uh, of, of succession or, or that land, that interest conferred to another person, a parent or a deceased person cannot confer a right or an interest on that land upon death through succession to the children. 
but they automatically become owners of that land by virtue of them being in that specific group of representatives or being within that community which is specified in the act lakini lakini ndegwa let me yes. ask you what is community land meant for it can't be you know our land tenure in this country is such that or, or land usage is such that people don't farm together people don't you know have communal production people have more subsistence production or family based or individual so really what is i hear the spirit of of having communal land but what is the functional bit of it what what is it supposed to be for for grazing or what it was supposed to bring in the in, in the purview of the people especially the pastoralist communities who are always migrating from one area to another in search of grass and you remember the recent chaos in uh, i think in laikipia where there were the communities who were, were, were actually having uh, altercations with the private developers because the communities believe that land is community land is their land for grazing so when you come and fence it and purport to hold it as your own private land then it you are disadvantaging the communities there and not a particular person but the whole community at large so the community land was brought on board to ensure that even those communities which are pastoralists can also have a, a right to that title and maybe communally they can also get to own land communally yeah i'm just I, i'm i'm really wondering what the what the functional benefit for communal land is but i hear i hear the the the, the reason and you know and the, the the reason behind it for you know like pastoralists but i just don't know this 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 other kind of communities i don't know what they would use it for but anyway that's a discussion for another day so i was asking before i went off air if i'm yeah. buying property how where may i confirm if there's a school coming up or there's a sewer line next sewer line next door you know planned or if the road reserve is right cutting cr- across or where may i confirm in advance even yes. though these things have not been developed yet where can i go to check if i'm right in the middle of an industrial area or if i'm 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 right you know at the front of a sewer line or you know a yeah. garbage dumping site yeah well there are, there are a number of offices you can pop into and confirm this one is the office of the fiscal planner you'll be able to identify the various uh, projects or or how the county government has planned that region to be you can also visit the the ministry of planning because it also give you the national view in terms of how the national government is planning to have what in a particular region for example the konza city then the other good thing to also have is the registry index map the registry index map will show you uh, a particular region a vast region and that map in that map you'll be able to see that particular parcels of land have been set aside for schools others uh, hospitals and all other public uh, amenities within that region so when you're buying land you're able to know i am this close to the school i am this close to the market i am this close to the hospital and mm. it will, it will also lay out the roads that are, are supposed to serve those regions of course connecting to the major roads which are under the, the national government got it got it got it so my last question my last question mr degwa is yeah. i know that there is property or there is land that get the title deed right in my name as selin for instance yeah. right but then there are some other properties that only get allotment letters yes what what's the reason what's the difference and what's the reason and when should i expect to get a title deed and when should i expect to buy, to get an allotment letter instead the the, the allotment letter and the title deed is a is a discussion to be done under the freehold and leasehold and a freehold under the freehold titles and leasehold titles just okay the leases and freehold so when you are making an application to the government to be allocated land you are first given an allotment letter by the government for that for a particular land so the government gives you an, an allotment letter telling you that we have allotted, allotted you a plot maybe in in uh, mulolongo go and pay this rent the amount of money you're supposed to pay as rent 
for a period of 99 years. Upon payment of uh, that rent as an amount, you are now accepting the allocation by the government, the allocation of the lease. Then the title is prepared, a certificate of lease as a title of that land. A freehold title is given now under this other regime where you have a freehold title. So when you buy land from Mwangi, Mwangi transfers to you a freehold title and you'll have a certificate of title. So so then um um the issue of documentation, if I have an allotment letter, I can actually have it for a period of you know like ninety-nine years, and I can actually transfer that allotment letter from my ownership to somebody else's. The allotment letter, after you have been given the allotment letter, it matures to become a certificate of lease, which is the title that you are given. So you don't stop at the allotment letter. You are given an allotment letter giving the conditions that you must abide with for you to be allocated that land fully. One of the conditions mm -hmm. is one of the conditions that they, it's a lease for 99 years. The other is that uh, you pay a particular amount of money as rent for that particular piece of land. Once you have done that and you have filed with the ministry, then you are given a certificate of lease as the title. So at the end of the day, when you're transferring, you're transferring a title, but in the nature of a lease. All right? So that at the end of the lease period, you now renew your lease. But if you don't, another person is given an allotment letter in the same parcel of land for him now to satisfy the conditions also. I see. Yeah. I see. Mwangi, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, I don't have any other question on Sunday. All right. Yeah. So, Mr. Degwa, if, 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 <clears throat> if, if our members want to check matters land and purchase, you know, and the green card and all those things, you'd like yes. them to reach you, you know? How may they reach you? Well, they can reach us uh, through my mobile phone number is 726 153 or... 0773-023-093. That's the office line. All right. So, guys, Mr. Degwa's number is on the screen. Please use it responsibly once again. It is his work line. And yeah. this would be issues to do with land or if you need support or if you need a, a letter from the advocates to take to, um, to go and get the green card, all those things that we've been discussing, you know, please check. Father, under this thread right here, you may ask any questions that were not addressed and uh, Mr. Degwa will be kind enough to come through and give you the responses. Or if it's yeah. something that you missed and we can address uh, adequately, we shall do so. We don't claim to be the experts in this area because there are a lot of legal strings to it. So we may definitely be you know, uh, referring uh, the same to Mr. Degwa. And, and, yeah. and, and, and members, uh, yeah? Yeah, maybe also... They can also be uh, you have put in the discussion section of the group chasing the title deed. Actually, Mr. Ndegwa is also part of that group. And yes. He's yeah. a very active member. So you can also share anything you, you want to ask about land in that group. And you'll see people actually will actually help you in the discussion. Yes. discussions. Yep. Excellent, guys. Thank you, Mr. Ndegwa, for coming through. Thank you for staying on. And thank you for a very, very, very... Um, you know, spirited explanation on these things. They are very confusing. We appreciate your legal mind and presence. So we will let you go now so that you can do a bit of um, housekeeping. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for showing up and God bless you. Thank you so much, Salina. Nice. Right. Thank you. Have a good night. So guys, uh, I hope that this was valuable for you. I believe it was. I learned a lot of things. I'm sure you did as well. And increasingly, we are hoping that uh, this uh, segment that we're sharing here with you in the Builders Baraza, things that are growing you as a member of this group and as a citizen of Kenya. Now, a few things. One, our YouTube page, please subscribe. I know I had promised to reward 10 people. I haven't yet because you're not so many yet. But yes, by tomorrow, I will randomize and I will pick 10 people and I will inbox you so that you can share with you, me your number so that I can do what I said I'd do. You know, I like to keep my word. That is one. Two, um, the, um, the, um, the, the lands group, you know, um, Chasing the Title Deed, it's a sister group. It is actually created by the builders and co-creators group. 
please log in and, and be a member and follow the discussions. Uh, Mr. Ndegwa is really supporting us in that area. And so it's important that you know, so that on the day that you're ready to buy, you are educated. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, is that we have advertising room and sponsorship space. I mean, sponsorship room and advertising space. We can actually fly to your still adverts like in form of a poster. But the other thing that we can do is that we can actually play your audiovisual adverts for your product. The products that come here will not be hair or shoes or makeup or nails or cups or spoons. Rather, it will be land, <laughs> wheelbarrows, stone, yeah. you know, all Amen. the brick and mortar in our space. You get it. So send us your request. We will give you the rates and you can gain, um, you know, traction. Remember, when you're here, your advert will also follow through in the, in, the face, in, the, in, the, in the YouTube channel. So do not delay. Quicken your steps. Give us a call. Our numbers are on the screen. We will be able to give you rates. You will gain. The group will gain we will gain as your admins as well. And everybody goes home happy. Other than that, members, I want to appreciate your presence here today. Thank you very much for tuning in and for staying glued. Thank you for engaging with us. Be on the lookout for a brand new segment on Monday at 8.30 p.m. We shall announce what it's going to be. But for now, Mwangi, do you have anything else to add? No, I don't have, but I think we had a, I had a great session tonight. Excellent. Have a good evening. Yes, indeed. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. God bless you. Keep building. I hope you're paying your fundies. I hope you're seeing growth and I hope you're excited about construction. Keep building and God bless you. Good night. All right.